Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, here's a new installment of Gimme 10, dedicated this week to a genre that's so vast and so monolithic that I probably won't do it justice, but here goes nothing. I'm going to talk about minimalism, um, which more than a genre is a musical school of thought, a musical idea. And um, I think most viewers of this channel would have a sort of a clue what minimalism is all about uh, and heard the names of Lamont Young, um, Terry Riley, Steve Rice and Philip Glass at least on this channel because I talk about them all the time but you know just to give a brief overview and some key records and what I've done is I've picked 10 key records and then I've picked five other records that are you know, inspired directly or indirectly by um, minimalism and just to to have, you know, something a bit more, a more modern twist on it. Um, but I will say that for me, if I'm going to identify the roots of minimalism, I think this piece by Ravel, the Bolero, has a lot of the hallmarks. Of this, this will irk purists, obviously, you're going to start throwing your marimbas and uh, and 16 violins at the screen, screaming, what is he talking about? But yes, um, Bolero, but Ravel, this is one of the versions of the Bolero, Bolero that I have in my collection, but um, I've got this looping, repetitive motive that seemingly adds nothing, but, you know, bar after bar after bar, you, you get these slight variations this what minimal composers call additive composition, which is adding a little bit of something which is almost imperceptible. You know, you, you, you don't know it's happening. You listen to something like Music for 18 Musicians, that's a perfect example of a piece using uh, gradual changes and additive compositions to which are elements of um, minimalism but not just i mean there's the use of classical instruments i think as minimalism evolved um it, more and more sort of non-traditional electronic instruments appeared i mean as early as you know people like terry riley using keyboards to make very droning a uh, very sort of a wash with um you know organs and synth kind of mesmerizing mini micro symphonies and you know, I'm talking about Rainbow in Curved Air there for example or uh, Le Secret de la Vie which I could talk about but anyway this idea of drone as you know is one of these key components of minimalism that has pervaded you know and infused the spirit of a lot of stuff that followed um, you know from bands as diverse as Tangerine Dream to you know um, you know, more modern composer, Aphex Twin or Boards of Canada. Even recently went to see Tim Hecker and um, the the washes of drones that he was just, you know, pushing forward, which is not too dissimilar to uh, the music you can hear on this record, uh, which is the first record I want to discuss with you today. Uh, this is Lamont Young's uh, The Theatre of Eternal Music, Dreamhouse 7817, which is part of a bigger piece called uh, the, tor the tortoise, uh, his dreams and journey, um, journeys, maybe plural. Um, uh, this is a four piece uh, composed, made of uh, Lamont Young on um, electronics and voice. Marion Zazila, who was to become his wife, uh, who does some singing. And you also have the trumpet of John Hassel on this, which is a good link to the video I did last week on Fourth World. Which is, uh, this is a good, you know, effectively, it's a good segue to that video. Um, the music found on this is uh, very droning, very, very, very repetitive. Nothing much happens in the way of changes. The changes, as gradual as they may be, are very slight. Side B, I'm going to be honest, it's pretty shapeless music wise. It's just a drone that. I don't think that I could find enjoyment listen, listening to, I'm going to be perfectly honest. This piece historically is very interesting. 
And um, for me, you know, these records by Lamont Young are very scarce. He didn't record very many things. Um, so it's good to have some of his music and try to understand what he was all about. Um, a much more enjoyable release is um, so Terry Riley. Now both of both of both Terry Riley and Lamont Young were very hef heavily influenced by Indian music as well, and you can see how Indian scales, this kind of idea of microtonality, is very present within the music uh, within minimalism. Uh, both of them studied with uh, Pandit Pranath, who was an Indian vocalist who school them to the idea of you know um, Hindustani um, scales and chanting and and that sort of informed the music now this record is an absolute masterpiece of again is is Terry Riley playing synth basically and um, uh, you know if you've ever heard Poppy No Good and the Phantom Band which is the second track um, which is played on electric organ and harpsichords. Um, you get this absolute um, looping, kind of, again, mesmerizing, repetitive, but never, you, you're never really bored listening to this. It's, it's, a, it's a joyful piece of music and one that everybody should probably get into. So these are the, the, the two originators and then the names of Steve Reich and Philip Glass often pop up obviously for good reason because well you know they had a lot of association um, and although to this day they will maintain that they hate each other at the time they they were very good friends and same with Terry Riley and Lamont Young they were very good friends to start with and there's so many feuds within the the minimalist community. They they like the VC basically. Um, so <laughs> um, this piece for me is a very representative, very lovely composition by Steve Rush. I mean, music for eighteen musician for sure. But for me, I don't know. I tend to come back more to this these days. It's a similar piece in a way. Uh, Octet music for a large ensemble violin phase. Um, it uses all the key concepts and the, the key tropes of minimalism from being played on standard instruments to this idea of gradual changes, additive composition, all of it is to be found here. Um, just, yeah, it came out on ECM in 1980, so a much later piece than uh, Rainbow in Curve there from 1969, but all the same. And if I'm going to choose a Philip Glass piece to showcase, then I will go for North Star because it's the bite size Philip Glass, in my opinion. It's just they're small tracks, very digestible tracks, which get, which really get you the idea of Philip Glass, what he's all about. This is what Philip Glass is all about, but in a sort of condensed form. Um, he plays all sorts of electronic instruments from the Farfisa, the Hammond organs, uh, Fender Rhodes, Arp synth. And then there's a few other instruments that pop up, uh, sax, flute. Uh, Joan LaBarbera uh, is on voice on this, on this record. I, I just feel that this is a perfect, perfectly good representation of the art of Philip Glass, but, you know, in, the, in smaller form. Then a name that surely has to be mentioned in the conversation about minimalism is the name of John Adams. Uh, because if those four that I've mentioned are probably the heavyweights, the, the Mount Rushmore of minimalism, John Adams surely probably deserves a place there too. Um, this is a wonderful composition, two wonderful compositions, Shaker Loops for seven solo strings and Frisian Gates, which is a piano composition. And on this, you, you again, you, you, you get this the, the shaker loops the first um, composition on this is a very trance inducing very um, at times a bit jarring composition but it never goes into too much of the avant-garde that it's unreachable um, 
a very very beautiful composition obviously <clears throat> more in the realm of modern classical or, or what they call new music um, but still very much steeped in the idea of minimalism is this record by uh, Harold Budd, The Pavilion of Dreams. A superb, just serene, lovely piece of, um, of I mean, everything on there is just so incredibly fulfilling and lovely and um, features Marin Brown, obviously Harold Budd on piano on this Gavin Bryce which I'm going to talk about him in a minute Michael Nyman another heavyweight heavyweight in the conversation about uh, minimalism uh, who plays marimba there for example and lots of voices and lots of uh, there's a chorus of voices there's Brian Eno appears on this too as he was um, I think the uh, the owner of the label this was released on um, just essential piece of, of work um, the first track Bismali Rahman Rahim uh, composed for Marion Brown is just such a delicate piece of it's just incredible Gavin Bryars I was talking about him a second ago the sinking of the Titanic I mean Jesus Jesus blood never failed me yet with its phrase that's repeated and repeated and repeated and you never know when it's going to finish that is minimalism 101 there is no he's not he's not sh he's not shying from it he's completely and utterly uh, possessed <laughs> by the spirit of minimalism um has Derek Bailey on guitar Michael Nyman on organ you know conducted by Gavin Bryars obviously the cockpit ensemble strings Fantastic composition from 1978. I obviously have to mention the amazing Penguin Cafe Orchestra because whilst not exactly rooted entirely in minimalism, has other elements of, I don't know, chamber music, for, chamber music, for example, but this record here is an absolute tour de force in terms of um, what, when I listen to this, I, I just, it, it's just such a again it's like with the pavilion of dreams there's a a sheer loveliness about this music which you can't you absolutely can't deny i mean obviously the instrumentation this is the band led by simon jeffs who you know is a genius was a genius because he's, he's no longer with us i believe recorded in 1976 the sound of someone you love was going away and it doesn't matter. I mean, is that the best title track name that you could ever think of? Um, I have to mention this ECM classic, uh, which is very on the avant-garde tip, uh, Meredith Monk, Dolman Music, um, which is minimalism, but with a very strong emphasis on vocalization voice used as an as a real instrument um, and she was very much active in the new york scene and um, on this you've got julius eastman uh robert ean um i think uh that philip glass might have been involved so colin Wal walcott is on percussion and violin on this yeah but um she was very much a, um at least a, a, dis a disciple of philip glass uh meredith monk um and um okay i have to mention the chronos quartets as well because i mean whilst you know they mostly play other people's music um they very much embodied a lot of the ideas of minimalism this was sent to me by my uh, good friend cedric uh fairly recently in a, in a package i want to share, share that to him as well um and um this has been re repressed by i think vinyl me please 
um, and he's a lovely, lovely piece to have. So the Cronish Quartet, the famous Cronish Quartet, David Harrington, John Sherba, Hank Dutt and Joan Jean Renault on violin, viola and cello. Um, absolutely delightful music again. Uh, what they call new music uh, playing Philip Glass and last record as part of this sort of official gimme 10 which is already a gimme 11 we don't care it's my channel I can do whatever I want is I have to talk about Arvo Pear absolutely have to talk about the great uh, Estonian composer Estonian Lithuanian Estonian I said I never know um, I think he's Estonian composer um, and especially Alina, which I think is my favorite. Very, very delicate, sort of almost absent, you know, it's so very just, yeah, atmospheric music and, you know, heart wrenching kind of kind of stuff, you know. Um, I could have talked about obviously um, his great masterwork on his CM. Um, uh, name escapes me now, but I am not going to mention those. Tadeum is a choir of voices, the Estonian Philharmonic uh, Chamber Choir. Amazing stuff. Um, so whilst I'm here, I'm going to talk about five records that I've just, you know, that I love, that I think you know, you could throw in a conversation. Um, and the first one, so any anything with Midori Takada has this strong, strong minimalist influence. And this record is absolutely, um, it, you can't deny the influence of, of minimalism on Through the Looking Glass, um, especially on um, the last track, Catastrophe. Um, it's just, yeah, there's this kind of Steve Rush esque kind of approach composition. Midori Takada, who is a Japanese composer, she's uh, she's still active and still tours. Um, you know, amazing. Um, here's a record that I got sent by my pal Christoph in Switzerland quite recently as well uh, in a VCLT package. Uh, Nachthorn. Uh, Maxim Danuk, uh, this is totally, totally in the minimalist mindset. This is from 2022, but you've got treated organs, which, again, what's, you know, conceptually, is there a big difference between that and rainbow and curved air? Not really. Um, beautiful music, really serene, abstract, without being unreachable. Just everything I love about music is concentrated there. Nachron is a recent record that is absolutely infused to the hilt with the idea of minimalism. The the great floating point and fairy senders in the London Symphony Orchestra. Now this record is a modern minimalist masterpiece for me, at least in my opinion. Even its design is just. You know, you can see where where he's taking his cues. Uh, Sam Shepard, uh, floating points, um, and this beautiful package um, is really a you know a, a, a love letter to to modern composition, to to avant garde music, to like he, he's really pushed himself to do something that was probably outside of his of the realm of his. Um, because he made mostly kind of progressive electronic music before to that point. Um, and why is this minimalist for me? You know, you've got these very short loops which are punctuated with Ferro Sanders. Um, they don't all repeat themselves. I mean, they're, they're different little bits of, you know, slight little motifs, but as a whole, I feel like it's the spirit is is there. Um, what about this record? It's, it's a complete and utter obscurity. Biologic music. I've had this since lockdown. 
the Helens Percussion Ensemble, HPE. We made just one record, they were from Helens in, uh, in the Netherlands, and uh, they made this kind of, it's a crossroad between tribal ambience, uh, minimalism, uh, and there's kind of a, a very African sounding kind of sound palette on this. It's, it's, they were very obviously very inspired by African rhythms as well as, as those. I just love this record. If you've never heard it, just check it out. It's just a beautiful record. That's from 1980, I want to say 88 or something around that time, 87, 88. And the last one I want to talk about is a New Zealand. Um, it's an incredible New Zealand ensemble uh, from scratch. Uh, Pacific 3210 Part 1, which was a, a protest record uh, against um, uh, the nuclear testing in the Pacific, uh, not far from New Zealand, from sadly the French. Um, I'm gonna, it's nothing to do with me personally, but I think that's a sad thing. Uh, everybody's heard about the Rainbow war Warrior being being bombed and all that, um, and they, this ensemble, they've got these sort of PVC pipe kind of giant percussive instruments, which they they play alongside with actual real drums and percussion. And this just creates a, a sort of a drone and amazing piece of music. Um, yeah, so from 1985 on Flying Nun of all, of all labels. Okay, so that was my little roundup on minimalism. I hope I didn't kill it for you. <laughs> um, Leave me some comments as usual um, and uh, keep the conversation going.